Hi, Vince.
Hi, Eugene. Hello. 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 Allah. Hi, good morning, Prof. Beth. Yes, we Hi. can hear you. Were you the one calling, Elmer? Yeah, I was calling you. Uh oh, because I, I, I hate to admit it, huh? Napakahirap niyang I'm not a robot, huh? <laughs> Kung nga, ngayon lang yun. Ang ulit pa yun, eh, no? Nakatatlo akong I'm not a robot. Ano ba yan? It's, it's so <laughs> philosophically profound. <laughs> yeah. So, nandito si Eugene and then Vince. Uh, we, si Ed De La Torre said he'll be uh, joining us. So, we can wait yeah. for maybe two, three more minutes. Yeah, he said so too. Uh -oh. Nagka-text kami kasi... Just to share, meron kaming senior sa panahon ng COVID. Okay. Alam mo naman, tin, ina, gusto ipasok ni Ed yung si Kuluyang Pilipino sa mga seniority. So, etc. So, it's very interesting in that, like, in that way. Elmer, yeah. did you get my, ano, my uh, one single PowerPoint? Uh, for today? Yeah, it's in your email just in case I might need it. Depends on. Ah, sige. I only have how many minutes? 20 or 30? Yeah, 20 to 30 is fine. A small group naman, so we can still go deep even if it took up 30 minutes. Okay. Elmer, you are with DAP, right? Um, well, 
I'm consultant to DAP. That you know, close. But also, ano, no, um, we are working with the, the the Bridging Leadership Institute. Is working with DAP, uh, hoping that they will be a part, particularly DAP sa Mindanao, hoping that they'll be a partner in setting up PL institutes in the different SUCs in Mindanao. Mm. So yun yung affiliation. Just to do consulting with DAP as well. Uh -huh. And then si Prof. Juan Canapi teaches bridging leadership also through DAP. So may some BL portfolio rin sa DAP. And then si Ed De La Torre is... Yeah, yeah. Oo. Uh -oh. uh -oh. uh -oh. Ang nagdala sa akin dyan si George Soriano. At saka, I forget who else. Basta jo po. George or Jonas? Jonas, sorry. Jonas. Jonas. Uh Oo. -oh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's George also, I think. Yes, oh nga, parang interchangeable. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, oh. But before before him pa, medyo may history na ako dyan panahon pa nila Boy Morales, pero very minor at that time. Uh, and then when Ed came in, and then si Ed, yun recommend ako, and then of course, you know, uh, si Jonas ang nag-formalize. And then I also lecture with the military. On Sikuliyang Pilipino, ha? Would you believe? For DAP or the... No, no, no. Different. Totally okay, different. Nabim. And in the ano to, National Defense College of the Philippines. I'm, I'm part of their curriculum. Sikuliyang Pilipino is one, one aspect of their curriculum. Mga kernels ito. National Defense College. The ones who are doing their master's degree or something. Whatever. Ganun. Ito, unang-una pa. Long-long ako. Long. Okay. O nga. Kasi si, uh, so the AFP now has a leadership center. And then BL, uh, yung framework. Although it's BL mm. within the military setting. But I, you know, uh, it's significantly ano ba? indigenized, I think. Yung mm. BL. So, Mm -mm, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. and peace building na gagamit nila yung BL. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Ganon. Marami rin akong inputs dyan pero luma na kasi akong <laughs> tigal na. My dad kasi was in the military and he was also with National Defense College. He was oh, okay. leading and that was a long time ago. He was uh -huh. he was one of the always the panelists for mga thesis etc. etc. But I, I came after that. Okay. Mm. So uh, maybe we can uh, just, there, there are five of us and then maybe people will join in along the way. Maybe we can have a round of introductions um, so that we know why uh, Vince and Eugene showed up and any questions they have in their mind that they're hoping will, yeah, uh, that, that are percolating in their mind that, we're hoping this discussion might help uh, address uh, Vince and then Eugene. Maybe you can introduce yourself and then share your questions, questions that you have. Hello. Hi, Prof. Best. Uh, Sir Eugene. Vince. Hi, Vince. Uh, ako po si Vince. I'm currently now with Civica. I'm oh. working with Elmer for some projects. I used to work at Zwilling Family Foundation and uh, oh. For the past 20 years, past 20 years, nasa wow. development work uh, with wow. Philippine Rural Reconstruction Movement. Oh, uh, okay. Everything sounds familiar to me. <laughs> <laughs> Narinig ko nga po nung nabanggit niyo si Boy Morales. Sabi ko, ako ito na. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yun po. I think ang interest ko po ngayon nga eh, yung leadership, uh, particularly bridging leadership. Siguro yung isang iniisip ko na question ngayon, uh, kung yung programs natin madalas sa mga development or wherever ay nasa sphere ng ibang tao yung dating rather than uh, hindi ibang tao kung kaya madalas pagka iniiwan mo yung programa o proyekto 
uh, nawawala o hindi buo ang pag ang pin ang pag ako ng mga ng mga uh, participants o stakeholders. No, no mga nakaraang araw yun yung iniisip ko ngayon eh. as uh, Elmer and I are also developing a uh, uh, food security uh, parang leadership uh, training program. So parang yun yung nagpa-percolate sa isip ko ngayon. Nice meeting you po again, uh, Prof. Beth and si Sir Eugene. Good morning po. Good morning. Okay. Thanks, Vince. So Eugene naman. Hi, morning. Eugene. Hi, Eugene. Uh, sorry, ako kumain lang ako. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Robot Beth. <laughs> Just kong aking skill, sobrang challenge. Ano ba yun? Baka may mga nandun rin trying to get in. Baka. I have to prove I'm human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so ano kailangan yung mga tanong, tanong mga tanong ko ba? Yeah, uh, what, what, ano yung, what, what part of your curiosity brought you to this uh, conversation? Um, ako ang tanong ko, uh, ang, ang values kasi, um, yung word na values, especially yung human values are very, um, what they call this, uh, maraming uh, theories, maraming diskusyon. Uh, ako, curious ako, how do you establish uh, uh, evidence-based values? Ah, ganda. Uh, Kasi maraming, disku maraming diskurso eh. Pero alin ba ang value, alin ang hindi value? Lalo na ngayon. Okay. Uh, maraming okay. assertions. Pero galing, galing. yun ba talaga? Yun lang. Parang totoo ka ba? Totoo ba ang value mo yan? Kung 20% ka ba, eh, value yun. O kung 80% ka, yun ang value. Uh, ah. Ano ba ang Filipino value? Yung 20% o yung 80% na gano'n? Yung sa totoo lang. Yes. <laughs> right. Kasi Outen pwede sabihin ng 20%, this is my Filipino value and I'm only 20% or 10% na ganito. Kayo, hindi kayo okay. Filipino. 80% kayo. <laughs> <laughs> Alam okay. nyo na kung sino yun. <laughs> galing, galing ng tanong. Uh, si okay. uh, sige. So, baka yung mga iba eh, trying to prove that they're not robots. Pero, pero recorded naman to and then we'll post them on YouTube so that, you know, yung hopefully uh, this uh, conversation will be useful to uh, program designers, teachers later on. No? Ayan, si Ed de la Torre. Ed. Ayan, uh, we were just the finishing up a round of introductions. Oh. Uh, so, uh, lima lang tayo so far. Uh, so, we do a round of introductions. Do you mind in introducing yourself and what questions uh, you have um, in your mind that uh, led you to join this uh, round bank conversation? So, uh, ano, one to two minutes lang. Yeah, introductions okay. lang. Up. I'm uh, Ed De La Torre. Calling from home, we just had a chat with Beth earlier. Well, my interest is in two things. When, as you know, I'm interested in leadership, especially in community leadership. And secondly, Sikuluyang Filipino is, has, is, has been one of the key influences in the leadership, grassroots leadership development course we developed with Education for Life Foundation with Beth as a board member and a key uh, para resource person. So, talagang in a time of crisis, in the, in the spirit of appreciative inquiry, we don't just look at our gaps, at our lack, our critique of our leaders, kundi anong meron tayo? What resource, anong pwedeng paghugutan from uh, the literature and our insight into Filipino values, especially about leadership. So, that I'm interested in this. I'm glad that I got to know this brown bag thing. And I subscribe para you can put me on notice for future okay. brown bag discussions. Okay. Great. Thanks. So welcome to this intimate brown bag conversation. Uh, I'll just give an overview and then uh, uh, provide some background questions on the crisis leadership part. And then we'll um, turn over the floor to Prof. Beth. So... Um, 
yun, wow. why did we organize this brown bag session itong covid <laughs> crisis um yun, is is throwing up in the air all sorts of structures and uh, uh, leadership challenges and now is a good time to study crisis leadership no? how we react how we are not reacting what works and what doesn't work and then there's the bridging leadership institute research agenda for 2025 there are some this is just adapted from uh, an education leadership education agenda in the US na mukhang you know malalim and a good way of framing the questions that we ought to be asking ourselves as well in the Philippines in a video conferencing wala nang traffic uh, it's a low cost way of um, creating high value uh, content you know? so that's why we're recording um, so um, uh, ayan. Ang objectives natin are to observe, interpret, and distill leadership insights from ongoing COVID-19 response and, uh, and and ayan, um, validate and curate emerging leadership tools. No? I don't know, maybe in the next couple of weeks, pwede, meron na tayong pwedeng prototype leadership tools so that the next time a pandemic hits us, we have a tool kit to take, or maybe our children or grandchildren will have tools that will say, oh, ginawa to ng lolo ko nung panahon ng COVID, baka ubra to ngayon. And then capture and share emerging knowledge uh, through video conferencing and YouTube. So it's a recorded, moderated discussion, one topic per brown bag, and then we'll release it on YouTube. Um, um, so general guidelines, feel free to contribute. Malit pa lang naman yung grupo natin. Keep your microphone on mute unless you want to speak. Speak with intention and then a question must end with a question mark. Meaning, ah, yeah, no. And then, um, so, okay, now to the crisis leadership part. Now, here's a framework on uh, the definitions on uh, differentiating and overlapping the definitions of crisis, disaster, and emergency. Okay, so, um, so in emergency, um, imminent, tapos, um, and then let's zoom in. Okay. So pag crisis, gaya ng nangyayari sa atin ngayon, no single solution, there's no single solution to the situation. It draws public and media attention. No? And therefore, there's public discourse. And therefore, we felt that this is a good time to talk about, okay, di ba, yung, uh, when there's public discourse, what values are we uh, uh, trying to articulate or um, uh, uh, implement? And then, the crisis, uh, may uncontrollability, may, uh, triggers rapid policy changes. It presents uh, some extraordinary, extraordinary risk, and then it disrupts the system as a whole. You know? And then there's potential for large damage and heavy losses. And that's why it's a good time to review our values um, on Filipino leadership and Filipino followership no? during crisis. Mi, uh, an anong tanong na magandang itanong sa panahon ng ngayon, what val which values do we uphold? No? Uh, kasi in, in crisis leadership, may, may my trade-offs, my different decision options, and these uh, options uphold certain values. No, gaya nitong social amelioration fund, it upholds a certain value. No, and we're doing that, and there are costs. No, which values? Number two, which values do we communicate? No, as we explain our policies. Ano yung pinapatingkad na values natin? No? Is it kapwa? Is it cooperation? Is it dog-eat-dog? Kanya-kanya? Dog? No? E, ibang tao naman sila. 
no? uh, mga ganun, no? how do we communicate these values so that as the public discusses this no watches the news they go back to their dinner table and discuss over the you know, over the family dinner values na lumilitaw no that they are picking up from the media and from the leaders and then uh, because crises uh, often damage or uh, destroy institutions which one do we restore and which ones do we reform in a new way so that you know build back better you know, as we come out of this how which values do we want to emphasize as we reestablish say the health systems post covid or human settlements post covid and social housing post covid so this ko lang yun yung one way of looking at uh, re-examining philippine values sa panahon ngayon in the context of crisis. Okay, so yun lang yung aking um, konting presentation on how the crisis leadership uh, component might be tackled during this conversation. So now we turn over the floor to Prof. Beth. Okay. Uh, do I, sorry ha, I'll put ano ba ko? I, I want the bigger frame nasa nasa side lang. Okay. Okay, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. And it's good to be here as usual and be with really kindred spirits. Very uh people who resonate with me in many ways. Um ngayon po, uh, dapat ang naka-schedule ay kapwa psychology. Uh, kaya lang sabi ko po kay Elmer, but ano, uh, we start first with uh, with the framework. Uh, at since ano, since uh, halos pare pareho yung nagattend or meron lang ilan na ano na bago ganon, I thought uh, it would be good to put a framework to the various discussions na in outline namin ni Elmer earlier on na inputs ko. And really, it's mostly related to conceptual issues and related to values actually. So, for the sake of everybody and for my own sake, na realize ko rin na first, hindi ko pa na bibigay yung values framework, pero pinag-uusapan ko na yung values. Tapos, second, uh, yung kaisa-isa kong lecture nung una, hindi kaisa-isa, itong unang-unang lecture ko dito sa grupo na to, uh, I, I basically just brushed or glossed over what is ekolohiyang Pilipino. And this is the larger framework. Why does leadership, uh, a, a crisis of leadership, need to have a framework in Filipino. Wag, wag muna, Elmer. Okay. Sige. Sorry. Sorry, kasi may mga okay. pasakali. Madi-distract sila eh. So, okay. So, uh, kaya gusto kong simulan sa uh, back to the basics and apologies to those who might already know this, like Ed, for example, although matagal na, matagal na yung lecture ko doon. Uh, tsaka si Eugene, for example, also who has read some of the materials already. But uh, actually, itong orientation ko on what is Sikulihang Pilipino will actually provide the essence of why we need Sikulihang Pilipino. And then whatever is attendant uh, to Sikulihang Pilipino. So gusto ko lang sabihin na hindi na historical ito ha, uh, definitions ito. Gusto ko lang sabihin na it is born out of, and this is my answers to Eugene's evidence-based, is born out of the experience, thought, and orientation of the Filipinos based on the full use of Filipino culture and language. Okay? Uh, sorry, I have to read so that I don't talk very long. Uh, the approach is one of indigenization from within. So, nag-ano tayo ng labas loob. Okay? whereby certain theoretical frameworks and methodologies emerge from the experiences of the people from indigenous cultures. How, where is it based? Evidence-based ba to? Or haka-haka lang ng ilang teortista? Uh, it is based on assessing historical, sociocultural realities, understanding the local languages, and in the context, unraveling Filipino characteristics, explaining them through the eyes 
of the Filipinos themselves. What would be the outcomes of such uh, a whole orientation on Sikulian Filipino? It would be a body of knowledge consisting of indigenous concepts, development of indigenous research methods, indigenous testing techniques, new directions in teaching psychology, and active participation in the application of Sikulian Filipino in everyday life situations, both crisis and non-crisis both here in the Philippines and abroad, wherever we find Filipinos, okay? So basically, that's where I'm coming from. Of course, this is a discipline that I honed for the last 45 years since I became the student of uh, Dr. Enriquez in the 70s. But there's no, that's not the history there. So I would like to proceed from there to say na lahat ito evidence-based, pero iba-ibang approaches. Okay, kasi ngayon masyadong ang methodology natin ay so-called scientific method ay masyadong natatali sa ano, natural sciences methods, experimentation. Kulang ng pagtingin sa mas malalim na pananaw ng social sciences. Hindi ko masinasabing mas malalim na scientific din na pananaw ng social science. But I will not go into the discourse of that but just to say now there are different approaches and we started in the beginning with phenomenological approaches. Bakit? Kasi kailangan mong i-document yung experience. Kailangan sa totoo lang. Kailangan empirical evidence. Hindi lang pwedeng theoretical and hypothesis testing. Hindi lang pwedeng laboratory ang panggagalingan ng iyong mga teorya. So, Awan ng Diyos po, nagawa namin lahat yan, including making valid, culturally validated personality tests, intelligence tests, uh, religiosity tests, na ngayon po effectively, pinalitan na namin ang mga standards na ginagamit ng mga Amerikano for the longest time to test us whether we are crazy, intelligent, or whatever we are, intelligent, etc. Kasi ginagamit po lang tests ay yun nga, Western-based models. In fact, marami po akong pwede sabihin sa intelligence test, but that's another matter. Kaya po tayo, tingin nila, bagsak tayo ng bagsak sa mga whatever test they give is because what standards are being used. Anyway, yung pangalawang gusto ko pong i-review lang natin, uh, which I already said last time, is pagkataong Pilipino. Kasi naka-anchor po ang leadership sa tao. Sino yung leader? Sino yung leader na Pilipino? At doon po sa last lecture ko before, sinabi ko po na ang nag tayo with what is the Filipino personality? What is the Filip who is the Filipino character or what are the characteristics of a Filipino? I will not repeat that now but just to say that is always the anchoring point in understanding leadership. Before you understand values, you have to understand what is the pagkatao. No? And interestingly, in one of my lectures, I already said, ang ganda ng wika. Kasi tao ang basis, ang root word ng ating personality, ng ating karakter. Pagkatao, the art of being human. And therefore, in a nutshell, the characteristics ng isang tao na may dalang humanity, may dalang humaneness. And I elaborated on that before, and that became the basis for understanding ng tinatawag na Filipino character. Pero madagu pong usapin yan, and this is where I will lead you to the values. Kailangan po maintindihan yun ano Filipino character. At kailangan maintindihan nyo ano yung konteksto ng Filipino karakter na yan para malaman nyo kung ano yung tinatawag na national identity. Hindi po pwedeng magkasya lamang tayo sa cultural identity o sa personal identity natin. Kailangan po magkaroon tayo ng tinatawag na national consciousness. Yan din po ay isang trait na dapat dala ng leader. Hindi lang po values na marami po tayong pwedeng enumerate kung hindi isang national consciousness 
national identity. Ang dami pong debate dyan hanggang ngayon po nagpapatayan at nagsasabunutan po kami sa debate on what is national consciousness. I just want to tell you that this is pala isipan sa mga psychologists at social scientists kasi sa ibang bansa po and I teach indigenous psychologists psychologists in other parts of the world. In other words, I understand psychologists in India, etc., etc. There's, there's a National Indigenous Psychology Association. Sabi nila sa akin, hindi ko yung maintindihan mga Pilipino. Bakit niyo pa yung problema ng national identity? That's a given, sabi nila. Why are you so hung up on understanding what is your identity? To this day, you worry about it? Eh kasi sabi ko, importante yan sa consciousness. To this day, you, you have not defined yourself. You have not defined what you are proud of. Yon. Tapos doon na po nagsimula yung sinasabi ni Lana. Sorry state of Filipino national identity. Where we start with the assumption that the Filipino is his own worst enemy. Okay? Isang... Isang observation po yan from the outside ng mga nanonood sa atin na sinasabi, we are so blaming ourselves, we are so deprecating, and when you ask people what they're proud of, it takes them so long to say what they are so proud of. I do this exercise all the time with my students. I tell them, taga saan ka ba? Kasi that's the identity is usually uh, geographical or linguistic, ethno-linguistic. Pagkatapos sasabihin ko, o pag pumunta ako dyan sa Pampanga, o pag pumunta ako dyan sa Holo, ano may pagmamalaki mo sa akin? Kutang twisted sila. Yung isa kong studyante na taga Marawi, sabi niya, terorista raw po kami. Sabi. Wala siyang masabi na what he is proud of as a Muslim living in Marawi. So that is the sorry state of our identity. It's hard to who got from where we are, from where we're coming from. Because the patterns of our behavior was dictated to us. The standards of who we are and where we belong has been long dictated to us. And I will not go into a lecture of colonial identity, etc. But just to say na, nananatili pa po ito hanggang ngayon sa marami. Okay? At dito po papasok ang values framework. Kasi po, pagka hindi nyo kilala sarili nyo, pagka hindi kayo proud of something, ano po ba ibig sabihin ng values? Ano yung pinapahalagahan ninyo? Ano yung pinaka-importante sa buhay nyo? Ano yung espiritu na dumad, nagdadala sa inyo? What is the force that leads you to do something? Hindi lang po yan individual element of passion. There is a force that leads you. Of course, you can say there are absolute values or whatever it is, you know, honesty, integrity, truth, etc. I won't go into that, no? Uh, but I would like to go into a more contextual framing of Anong may pagmamalaki nyo? Anong pinapahalagahan nyo sa buhay? Etc. Doon po sa isang study na minention ko dati, pinag-aralan yung values ng isang kulturang corporate. Ang lumabas po tatlo. Isishare ko lang po ngayon as a context no, sa ating value framework. And then I'll go into the framework. Uh, matagal na po itong study, pero interestingly, lumalabas palagi. Tapos isang study rin po ng values na related naman sa mga estudyante nung araw. Yung sa mga estudyante, unahin ko, kasi yung mga estudyante, nung tinanong sila, what, you, what would you prefer? If, what, were, what would you prefer if you were born into some nationality? Remember, this is a national identity, national consciousness. Ha? Si Maludoro nila gumawa ng study na to. Kilala pa namin mga matatanda ed. No? Ang kanyang ano, ang kanyang uh, naging conclusion ang, sa kanyang study, if they were born into a nationality, what would you choose? Ang sagot po nila, 
number one was Americano. This was in the 80s, by the way, okay? Nag, syempre, bruhaha lahat. Oh my God, we all want to be Americans. But it was no surprise. Tapos po, of course, this was post, uh, I think this was within the Marcos era. Anyway, another study was done again, similarly, ganon, tumaas na yung rango ng Pilipino. Naging ano na, number three na yata yung I want to be Filipino if I were born into a nationality. Anyway, what's the point? The point is, now for adults in this value framework, ang nakita namin palagi lumalabas ay number one is family. Number two is God. nag alternate po yung dalawang yan. And mahabang istorya. No? And number three, surprise, surprise, which still still comes up and this is where i say there's hope for the flowers is country okay and this is evidence based uh, this is not i'm just making it up because this is the ideal uh, situation but i'm saying this because uh i wouldn't be sure if we did the study today on values whether we will get the same things okay but i'm sure we will get god Pero ang label po doon, religiosity, hindi po spirituality. Ang label po nung God as a value is religiosity. Okay, which brings me now to the values framework. Uh, Elmer, could you please flash the values framework? Pwede i-flash na yon. So, bakit ko po ginagawa itong values framework? Kasi po yung mga susunod nating usapin ay nakaangka na ang kilos ugali asal gawin natin kahit na stated intentionally and intentionally etc etc consciously and consciously we are operating under certain values whether we like it or not ito pong values framework na to ay ginawa matagal na ni Dr. Enriquez at Inugot ko na lang po ito doon sa isang text na pinag na tinuturo ko sa mga estudyante. Kasi ito po yung uh, makikita nyo ang title, hindi values framework. Okay? Kasi ito po ay may discussion on the pivotal element bago mo maintindihan ng values. At saka yung core value na makikipagkapwa. Okay? So, Doon ko po sisimulan, rather than mag enumerate ako ng kung ano-ano mga values, sisimulan ko po doon sa paano mo maiintindihan ng values na to. Sa pag-aaral po namin ng values, syempre kailangan meron kang methodology. Hindi para sa research, kung hindi para sa pag mo ng values. At number one po dito, at tinatawag nila itong pivotal value ay yung pakiramdam. Inulit ko, inuulit ko lang po ito dahil sinasabi ko po ito palagi. Kasi yung pakiramdam po, essentially, ang sinasabi, please use your observation methods. Please use your senses. Gamitin mo ang iyong pandama. So, objective yan. Ha? Ibig sabihin, Eyes, ears, etc. Et Gamitin mo ang iyong pandama. Pero I like to note also na pag ginamit mo ang iyong pandama, kailangan with respect and with dignity. Kaya minagyan ng paki. Interesting sa ating wika na embedded yung please, embedded yung politeness sa ating wika. So ibig sabihin lang nito in other translations is it's Use your sensitivity. Be very sensitive to the nuances of language, to the nuances of nonverbal cues, to the nuances of culture. Yan po ibig sabihin ng gamitin ng iyong pandama. Gamitin yung pakiramdam. I usually add a sixth sense kasi ang tingin ko sa ating mga Pilipino ay meron tayong, I hate to say the word, but meron tayong psychic abilities. 
which in other terminologies will be called intuitive or instinctive or whatever in other languages. Okay. And this is what to me is very Filipino because ang kultura po natin na na-indigenize or ang indigenous cultures po natin, malakas na malakas yung dating na yan. Dahil po, ngayon tinatawag po nila itong pagan cultures, animistic cultures, pero ito po ay galing sa indigenous knowledge and practices ng ating mga ninuno. Na hanggang ngayon po ay nakakapag-predict pa kung kailan dadating ang bagyo, kung kailan uulan, kung kailan etc. etc. na ginagamit po ngayon in emergencies kasi yung ating pong mga test testing for example ng mga earthquakes nagkasira-sira pero yung mga aso, yung mga pusa, yung mga hayop na sabi nila na darating na yung tsunami. This is my tsunami experience of indigenous knowledge and cultures. Anyway, pasok po tayo ngayon. So ito pong pakiramdam is a shared inner perception of the self and identity. Okay. Mahirap pag English ano parang guma, parang gumaganda pero nagiging ano nagiging mahirap sabihin. I know time is running so I will I will pick up the first one which is core value. And I will pick it up because it is what embodies the rest. Okay? Uh, and then maybe if I don't if I'm not able to do everything today uh, we will just continue for the following weeks. Okay, but I wanted to show you already what's here now. In a broad stroke, there is the pivotal value, which I already explained. There is the what is called colonial accommodative surface values, one of which I already discussed last time, which is here, propriety and dignity. And then there is always a behavior pattern related to that. And then there is what we call frontative surface values. Kadalasan po sa discussion ng values framework, ang palagi lang po napag-uusapan yung colonial accommodative rather than yung confrontative surface values. Okay? So, tuwang-tuwa ako kasi pwede kong isa-isahin yan in the course of our discussions in the coming days. But don't worry, Elmer, I'm not gonna do it all now. Although I'm excited. Okay? So, let's start with kapwa as the core value. Okay? And I think this is the reason also why you're listening now because nakapublish yung kapwa. In a nutshell, uh, it is related to the concept of I and you. Okay? In psychology and everywhere, when you understand the human being, you always look at it in terms of I and you. The I as distinct, separate from the you. Kaya, pero hindi rin equal ito sa tao, ibang tao ha. We'll discuss that later. Yung pong I and you is also the I and the other. Sa Western psychology, these are very distinct, dichotomous, separate entities. Kaya nga po sabi ni Martin Bobber, yung philosopher, I am I and you are you. If by chance we meet, isn't that beautiful? Kaya po lahat ng discourse, whether it's leadership or whether it's just being yourself, it, it always says, you know, uh, you know, just be yourself or just focus on yourself. Okay? Noong una po, nahihirapan ako dyan sa concept na yan ng focus on yourself, be yourself, etc. Kasi po, sa atin, importante yung other. Importante yung other. Bakit po? Ang kultura po na nagdadala nitong consciousness ng individualistic understanding ay quest tayo po napaka-collectivistic po ng understanding natin. We are so group-oriented and collective in the way we move. I doesn't, it doesn't mean we don't have an ego. Ha? It doesn't mean we don't have an I. Okay? But our I is so submerged and so emerged in the other, that there are no boundaries. Kaya ang hira pong pag-usapan, lalo na sa hindi elita, lalo na sa masa ng concept ng privacy. Okay? Kasi kasama po kayo hanggang, 
hindi po kayo titigilan, magkasama po kayo hanggang sa toilet. Toilet ka na lang nga matatahimik kasi doon ka lang siguro nag-iisa. Kaya nga po ang slogan ni Ninoy Aquino, nung dumating siya from the tarmac, eh, hindi ka nag-iisa. Sapagkat nagre-resonate sa atin po yung you are not alone in this. Sa iba po, I need my time, I need my private space, I need my, uh, I need this. Kaya po nitong nag-physical distancing na tayo, napakahirap po ipaliwanag nung humiwalay ka sa iba. Okay? That's on the one hand. Okay? So, this is dichotomy. Okay? Ang problema po, sa wika natin, kung titingnan nyo po ang wika natin, Connectivity po lahat. I'll give you an example of kita. It's a line, it's a word that is not present in English. Okay? Because kita, but by the way, kita is present in Indonesia. Ha? Of course, because our language is based on Malay also. So, kita is I and you together. Okay? Kaya pag sinabi niyo po, I love you, hindi po niyo pwedeng i-assume na yung mahal kita is the same as I love you. Because in I love you, the I is separate from the you. In mahal kita, kita is not separate from the I. Okay? And then, in terms of kita also, behaviorally and philosophically, if I say mahal kita, it's reciprocal. In other words, I can assume that you love me too. I love you because I will not say mahal kita if I cannot assume I love you too. Kaya ang hirap po ng mga marriage proposals na Tagalog. Eh, yung I love you, pag nagpo-propose po ng marriage, eh, hihintay mo muna yung sagot. Yes, I love you too. Let's get married. Pero hindi po ganyan sa wika ng kita. Okay? Ang kapwa po is even more difficult because if you use the pronouns, you will say, you will not say we only. You will say I, you, and we together. So it is basically a shared identity. Hindi po maintindihan niya ng mga Westerners na your pain is my pain. Your problem is my problem. Kaya po sila ang sagot nila, that's your problem, not mine. Eh tayo po, lahat po yung problema natin. Because part of our identity is in the other. And that's very hard to understand, as I said, especially with us who are schooled in Western philosophical thinking, who are schooled in rationalist objective thinking. Okay, but if you look at Eastern philosophical thinking, then you will understand. Buddhism, Hinduism, Shintoism, the other is so submerged, or sorry, the I is so submerged that you can hardly recognize it. Okay, but still you will have to recognize that this is kapwa. So, ang tanong, no? yung Tao ba tsaka ibang tao, doon sa unang framework na binigay ko, tsaka Vince, ito yung tanong mo, ay magkahiwalay ba yan sa konsepto ng kapwa? Ang sagot, hindi po. Kasi ang kapwa po ay kapwa tao. At ang verb po nito ay pakikipagkapwa tao. Okay? There is the root word, there is the tao, kapwa-tao, and then there is the action, which is pakipagkapwa-tao. Ang interesting po sa atin, kasi sa theories of leadership, you're always asking for theories of behavior change. Kami po sa psychology, medyo natatawa, kasi the hardest one to determine or to push forward is behavior change. Tatlo po ang elements eh, cognitive, affective, behavioral. We are always at the cognitive level of our understanding of leadership, of our standing of pagkatao. 
hardly do we move into the emotional level, which is the affect of leadership, whether there is fear, there is anger. And when we do leadership, yan po ang ina-assess ng mga tao. Hindi yung cognitive, hindi lang po kung anong sinasabi yung information. Kung paano nyo po sinasabi yan, kung galit po kayo, kung nagmumura po kayo, kung linalait nyo po mga tao, that's affective. And in the aspect of leadership, you are judged by that. Pangatlo po ay yung behavioral. Ibig sabihin, ano ang kilos, ugali, asal, gawi, magkakaiba po yan, ha? na gumagamit ng mga values natin. Okay? So, doon lang po kayo magkakaroon ng behavior change. Doon lang po mangyayari ang behavior change. Okay? Kaya yung behavior change model na ang, ang pinupuntahan ay action, hindi po yun. Ang behavior change po ay medyo malalim, pero nagre-reflect na ng action. So, which brings me to the last point ng pakikipagkapwa tao. So, notice po ang language natin palaging may ka. So, even your enemies are kapwa. Yung ibang tao, kapwa. Napaka all-embracing po niyang kapwa. Kaya kung minsan, nagiging halos religious at biblical ang ano, you love humanity. Pero hindi po. Kailangan po yung kapwa, there should be also a face and a name to that kapwa. Kaya lang po, napakataas ng criteria ng kapwa na parang ano, love your neighbors as you love yourself. Parang ganun po, pero not quite. Okay? So, this shared identity is something we will grapple with now. And in fact, to some extent, is my way of understanding our beloved president, dear leader. Kasi po, sa framework na ito ng value, kapwa ko rin po siya. Masakit man pong tanggapin, kapwa ko rin po siya. Okay? Kasi tao rin po siya. Uh, gusto po pong tagak lang, hindi lang po mabuting tao. Pero bawal po yun. Hindi rin po pwedeng sabihin nga. Baka, basta raw po ang pagtingin sa kapwa ay premised on what? Balik po tayo doon sa premise siya on the characteristics of what is a human being. Ano ang kanyang pagkakapwa, pakikipagkapwa tao. So ang, sa akin po, ang criteria ng core value na daladala dapat ng isang leader ay criteria ng marunong siyang makipagkapwa tao. Okay? Marunong hindi lang po sa isip kung hindi sa salita at saka sa gawa. Okay? Yung pong gawa ang mahirap ang evaluation kasi kailangan i-judge nyo na. Kung yung bang isip, salita at gawa ay may cohesion or may pagkakasama-sama. Again, sa Western psychology po kasi ang number one na sinasabi nila is dissonance. May dissonance yung salita mo, sa gawa mo, sa iniisip mo, ganyan. Kaya po ang goal ng ano, psychology ay eh, pag, ano, pag i-unite, unite yun. Kaya, kaya kayo po merong therapy kasi masyadong dissonant. Ngayon, ah, tawag nyo po dyan ngayon sa leadership disruptive. Kami po sa psychology, ang tawag po namin dyan dissonant value systems. Kasi yung isip ninyo, tsaka yung salita nyo, tsaka yung gawa nyo, hindi nagmamatch. Okay. Ayun. Yun po ang in a nutshell, gusto ko na makarinig ng mga tanong, in a nutshell, yun po yung mga uh, ilang malalalim na pag-ugat. No? Pwede ko pa pong palalimin yan, pero gusto ko makarinig na ng mga tanong. Kaya po, ibig sabihin po, ang value ay hindi yung kapwa. Sa akin, ang, ang value ay yung pakikipagkapwa tao. Okay, yung po yung action, yung po yung verb. Yung po yung ating number one criteria sa leadership. Yun lamang po for now. Yung iba po sa susunod na para po maka-entertain tayo ng questions. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Beth. Sige, so ngayon, um, ang pwede natin gawin uh, para talakayan na uh, ano, 
multilateral rather than the listeners que asking questions from the teacher. Baka yun, no, pwede natin pag-usapan ngayon. O sige, uh, given this framework, kung kunwari, you know, uh, three years from now, eh, meron tayong pandemic uli. Ano kaya yung itsura ng crisis leaders, yung mga municipal disaster risk management office na maayos yung mahusa yung training sa kanila ng on Filipino psychology as applied in crisis response. Ano yung itsura nun? Ano yung itsura ng uh, well-equipped crisis leader diba? during a crisis? Anong itsura nun? Ano yung galaw niya? Ano yung tono ng boses niya? I mean, uh, given this framework, what would that uh, crisis leader look like? O gaya ni Eugene, diba? if he uh, imbibed this and went back tomorrow uh, to his meetings, technical working groups at crisis response, paano niya ma na manifest itong mas malalim na pag-invoke ng uh, o pag-affirm or pag-propagate ng Filipino value system. Maybe the question uh, para ano uh, Not addressed to me only you. ha? Baka sa iba. Yeah. Maybe you can ask Eugene uh, how, how, would, how might you apply this in your next meeting so that they will see in you uh, somebody well equipped in <clears throat> Filipino psychology deployed in a crisis situation. Uh, yung bago ko sagutin yung tanong ko kay Beth, equal ba yung empathy sa pakikipagkapwa tao? Oo empathy. naman. Oo. The assumption, of course, is more basic than just pakikipagkapwa tao. The assumption is ano, egalitarian. Ibig sabihin, equal ang mga relationships. Pantay-pantay ang pagtingin sa tao. Based on the dignity of the human being. Yun ang, ano, yun ang fundamental, foundational ano, premise. Mm -hmm. so, pero, pero yung empathy, yun, in, in the, eh, nakakapture na ba nun yung buo? Kabuhan. Of course. Oh, of course, oh, oh. Uh, uh, kasi uh, uh, you're using it. Uh, empathy, ang translation na ginagamit nila ngayon ay malasakit. Ano? Uh, I have, I have uh, issues with that but I won't elaborate. Pero kasi uh, masyadong, ano, masyadong uh, malambot yung dating ng malasakit. At saka hindi, uh, although malalim. Kasi yung empathy, ang, ang hirap kasi pag in English mo, kasi you look at English categories of analysis, pero pwede mo siyang tingnan in terms ng an, saan ba nagmamanifest yung kapwa. Okay? At in, not the other way around. Anong, anong nagmamanifest ng empathy sa kapwa? Ah, Siyempre, yung pagtingin mo sa kanya bilang tao. Yung pagtrato mo sa kanya ng humane. So, titingnan mo ngayon isa-isa yung yung isip, kilos, ugali, gawa, itingnan mo yon pag yaan ay nasa standards ng pagiging makatao, then may empathy ka. It's a broader, it's a broader definition of it. Kasi yung previous uh, discussions, well, kami ni Elmer noon and other people, yung pag may crisis kasi, uh, of course, yung mga kung magiging consistent tayo dun sa kapwa, Uh, uh, magiging uh, ma dapat mangibabaw yung empathy. ba? Diba? Yung uh, pakikiramdam. Agree. Dun sa, dun sa, at narar kung ano nararamdaman nung, mga tinit nung tinatamaan ng krisis. Diba? Correct. Kaya lang, uh, on the other hand, kailangan mo rin ang command. Kailangan may central command ka. Kasi pag krisis nga, eh pag uh, pag sobra naman yung nga yung malasakit eh baka lumubog na yung uh, yung barko <laughs> diba? kung wala kang command and uh, it also creates uh, confusion gaya ngayon di ba pag uh, 
pakikiramdam pag if you let everybody have their say, uh, wala confusion ang nangyayari. Lalong-lalo na uh, kulang pa yung nalalaman ng uh, karamihan. I mean, no exception no? ng karamihan, including the experts, kung ano yung hinaharap natin na, na virus, ano yung epekto nito, ganyan. So pag sobra namang kalat yung pagmamalasakit or sobrang uh, malawak yung pakikiramdam, eh, ano, chaos yung nagiging uh, resulta. So kailangan mo ng balance eh, dun sa dalawa. Uh, yung sa pakikiramdam at dun sa pag, uh, pagkukomand. No? At, uh, pag, uh, hindi naman pag-uutos. Ano ba yun? Ano ba sa <laughs> magandang uh, salita doon? Pero Eugene. yun, yun. So may, may balance yung kailangan hanapin. Eugene, I beg to disagree. Okay? Kasi you are putting the two as opposites. Actually, they're not opposites. Okay? They're part of one integral whole. And you can look at it either as a circle or as a continuum. Okay? Uh, ibig sabihin, yung may command, hindi pwedeng walang malasak. Okay? Kasi malasakit is an inner ingredient. Is, it is in the loob. Okay? Kaya nga ako, medyo nahihirapan din dun sa leadership in crisis. Kasi ang tanong ko sa sarili ko, maski sa title na yan, it just hit me recently, is meron bang ibang klaseng leadership when not in crisis? Of course, siguro, ang sagot natin, meron. Okay? Pero ako tingin ko, when you're a leader in any country, in any situation, especially in countries like ours, you will just have to redefine the crisis. Pero palaging may crisis, big and small. Okay? So leadership is always a leadership in crisis, COVID or non-COVID. Kasi you're attending to the larger whole. And there's always a crisis situation you will have to face. So that's one point. The other point is, the reason I say it's not opposite and it's not a question of balance, eh, because the authoritarian tactics and dictatorial tactics, to me, in the concept of Kapwa, in the concept of my own being Filipino, sorry to say, in the concept of human rights, in the concept of dignity, is not acceptable is not acceptable under, is not excusable. In the same way that violence and abuse of any sort, even in war situations, even in the worst situations, name it, Hitlerian situations, and on, there is no excuse for the dictatorial power, the use of dictatorial powers and authoritarian powers. The balance that you are talking about, about is not the balance between authoritarian and compassion. It is the balance between prioritizing what comes first. Okay? Your interest, the interest of the majority of the people, the interest of the dominant class and the dominant culture, that's where you have to balance. Because you have to understand that we don't know the dominant, the masa, because we are not from that class. We have to balance our own way of looking at things and our worldview, no matter how we assume that we are makamasa at makakapwa. Ang value systems natin ay lumagpas na doon. I have so much, ano, Inter, I have so much at stake in the violation of my privacy, in the violation of my human rights. So, the balance is something else. Uh, sa akin, ang balance kasi is more of no one seeing the leadership. Pag may malasakit ka, Eugene, at pag meron kang kapwa, walang confusion. Kasi ang pagsunod, kaya kailangan yung leadership, hindi, hindi rin yan followership kasi naka-embed na yung leadership kasi leader ka lang pagka may follower ka. And it's the same principle. 
the same principle follows. There is no, no dichotomy also between the leader and the follower. Because I'm thinking ko sa leadership is organically grown. In other words, yung binigay sa akin ano ni Elmer, si Efren, ano, yung nagtutulak ng kariton na nang niya, CNN hero. Okay? Okay. Nung, nung naging le and considered siyang leader, no? Sa kanyang context. So leadership is situational. There is not one leader. You are a leader in one, you're a follower in the other, etc. So it's contextual. It's organically grown. Depende sa anong klase, anong klase hinahanap ng mga tao. So kaya ko naiintindihan si Duterte kasi organically grown yan. Eh. Ibig sabihin, makinig tayo kung ano hinahanap ng mga tao ngayon at bakit siyang hinanap, bakit siyang binoto. Ganon. But I wouldn't say I agree with it. But that's the other point of that question. No? Leadership is evocative. In other words, you do not dictate the terms of your leadership. You evolve it based on the needs of the people. That's why, ang tingin ko sa crisis leadership is not a listing of indicators about the, possess, the characteristics of a leader, but rather, it is a understanding of what is emerging organically from this culture. So, ang, itatag, ang pwede ko pang labor dyan ay hindi crisis leadership. Emerging leaders, leaders or emerging leadership in the time of crisis. Kasi bago na. Yun ang problema, kaya tayo confused. Kasi hindi na natin maipin down eh, sa ating old categories of analysis. At me, halos I'm climbing up the walls trying to find sense and meaning in all this because I have never met this animal before, this, this kind of crisis before. And I'm an emergency person. I've gone to all the emergencies in the world, Rwanda, Sudan, Timbuktu, whatever, news, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm an emergency person. I know all the issues in relation not only to mental health but situations of emergency but i've never seen this kind of situation before so sa akin, it's a sign of hope that perhaps may magi emerge na new kind of leader but we have to evoke that we cannot just sit down we have to evoke that kind of leadership but it has to be organically grown and my example there is Ephraim. Yung ano, binigay sa akin ni Elmer na, ano, na CNN hero. And other, po, other possible heroes that are unsung heroes. But of course, if you talk of the president, that's another, that's another matter. No? I hope to God, and that's my prayer, sana may mag-emerge from that. Sige, so i-recap ko lang. So parang in terms of definitions, there one category of leadership, diba, is a person with authority, CEO, president, and then there's a bureaucracy and he leads that organization through uh, the hierarchy. No? And then that is often what people uh, associate with leadership. Pero yung sinasabi nyo nga, mas emergent, meaning the collective begins to behave in a certain way parang nagva-viral yung behavior or yung uh, discourse or understanding or interpretation and it has a flow of itself or of its own para emergent no and the question is how does uh, somebody attempt to influence that swarm or that collective emerging understanding uh, so you, in a Elmer. sense that that's why you're saying you're this uh, label of leadership is tricky because it dominantly stands for this person who's on top of a power structure and can tell people and resources, direct people and resources. But what you're saying is ito na, yung mas resonant, no? As somebody who's able to engage or, or you know, the, the swarm or the collective can help that collective understand collectively, diba? What the work is, no, or the work that needs to be done, without them depending on his resources or power to make things happen. Parang ganon yung, mm. yung sabi. Agree. 
I think may sasabihin si Ed. Edward, where, where yes, you're... Yes, go ahead. Ed? Yes. You're raising your hand, sorry. You're still on mute, so please unmute yourself. Nakamute ka, Ed. Nakamute ka. Ayan. Mute. Unmute. Elmer, baka hindi siya marunong mag-unmute. Unmuted na ako. Ayan, ayan. Oh, ayan. ayan. Now we can no, you saw my hand because I was uh, checking the chat. <laughs> Ah, sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh, ang comment ko, somewhat related both sa ginamit namin, ano, ano lang yun eh, parang uh, ad, ad hoc framework sa ELP na nung nilecture ko sa AFP Leadership Development Center, parang may punto. Kasi nga, dati, tulad ng discussion natin, a lot of lang, uh, literature on leadership is about leadership traits. No? Or, hindi pa pa, values. Eh, at that time, from an activist background, sabi mo nga, uh, ang habol namin is operational. Ano? Si, sino ba ang hindi lang itinuturing na pinuno kundi nakakapanguno. <laughs> Tapos sabi mo nga, eh wala namang leader kung walang susunod. <laughs> Hindi sabihin, sabi nga, eh, so good mga kapatid, nauna ka, napatay ka, walang sumunod, bayani ka, pero hindi ka leader. <laughs> no? So, that time, sina kaya related yun sa usapin mo ng kapa, yung identity as a leader, related sa leader kanino. Uh, whether sila ang tumuring sa yung leader o sila ang tinuturing mong ikaw ay may responsibilidad o may gustong pamunuan. So, kung leader sa, sa gitna, ikaw, iba pa yung pagkatao mo, ganyan, ganyan. Ang unang tanong, hindi yung authoritarian leader ka ba, democratic leader ka, yung uh, anong style mo, ganun, hindi. Mahalaga yun. Pero ang dalawang malaking katangon ay leader kanino para sa ano? Example, leader ka ng sabihin natin sa ano? Sa gera. Leader ka para sa isang ano? Bakbakan na nakaset na yan. <laughs> para crisis. Nandiyan na yan. Tapos, leader ka kawal ang pinamumunuan mo. Now, in a, you can still have two forms na yung sabi nga ni na Bimrin, from the dominant uh, military tradition, ang military, unlike civilian leadership, obey first, ask questions later. Di ba? Shoot! Pag sinabi ng soldier pang why sir, eh di, dali ka sa likod. So, ang tanong na iba, meron pa bang ibang leadership crisis na yan, laban pa rin, may command basis, pero meron bang kahit paanong demokrasya konsultasyon? Ang sabi ng iba, wala akong karanasan. Hindi naman ako naging kasali ng NPA. <laughs> ang isa raw pwede, ang adaptation mo maliban sa goals, eh bago yung mismong campaign o yung operations o ambos, may diskusyon, pinapaliwanag. Bakit natin ito gagawin? Anong papel mo? Ano? Hindi sa actual fight na sa preparation. So, may some form of discussion bago sa actual. Eh, sabi nga sa akin yan minsan doon sa bago bantay ng mga uh, kernels. Intel pa yun na uh, some of them eventually naging RAM yata. Sabi niya, Ed, huwag na yung gawing NPA yung AFP. Sa amin, simple na lang. The legally, uh, the legal authority will decide who is the enemy and we will neutralize them. Sabi ni Doc Prudence sa kanila, naniniwala kayong legitimate si Marcos? Sabi niya, Doc, tanggapin na natin, wag mo na kaming ipolitika, ipoliticize sa amin. Ang legitimate ay yung na-elect. Pag ikaw ang na-elect sa susunod, sabi niya, Doc, I swear to you, pag in order mo, <laughs> napatay yung mga dati, susunod ako kasi for me, sabi nila, Ayaw namin, pag ang soldier ang nag-decide what is political target or what, nagot ka na. 
Now that's, so, ang point ko lang dun is, sabi ko, tama, no? yung sinabi ni Eugene, there is a command leadership. Depende kung sinong ikukumand mo na talaga naghihintay ng command at magsasabi, ba't siya ba nagkukonsult? At pangalawa, para sa ano? Para sa ano? Whether it's a campaign na pinaplano mo pa or ano na, talagang emergency. So, now, I, I contrast that with my field, education. You might have more parang dictatorial, dictating type of teachers. Meron kang type ng consulting type of teachers. May philosophy of education ka na. Pero the same thing. Nino. Eh siguro iba ang method mo at approach sa kinder at elementary at iba sa adults. Pag ang habol mo ay pero learning rin. Yung sa elementary, may element ka ng marami-raming input pero pag hindi ka nag-consult ano, at ginawa mong command, which has happened in grade school, sit down, learn. Eh di, yes, yung, yes yung bata, pero have they learned? Pag wala ka na, wala na. And the reverse naman, pag yung adults na marami nang alam, di tignan mo kaliwat kanan, aasari ka, ano pala yun sa amin, mga bata? So di, kung sino yung sa tingin mo ay iyong pinamumunuan or tumitingin sa iyo bilang pinuno may mahalaga at pangalawa para sa ano kasi kung learning yan mahaba-haba kung health yan ay lalo na kung kabuhayan yan iba-iba so sa akin yung context mahalaga ngayon ang last point ko na lang yung kasi extreme yang ano gera at edukasyon <laughs> The other is yung scale, yung sinabi ko na sa'yo last time, Beth. I think ang sikuloyang Pilipino, that whole universe niyan is applicable at many scales. But realistically, sa atin nga, ang Pinoy in general, ha? not just uh, masa, but even middle class, elibili, nasa tension tayo between uh, scales of mga kapwa. Meron kang mga kakilala, mga kaibigan, naging mga kasama, iba ang relasyon dyan. Iba pa yung sabi ko ng Giselle Shop type na formal, malawa. I'll apply it sa atin. Tina mo, aktivistang leader. Dati, panahon ng martial law, na we not only have formal leaders, but we have cadre. We look up to talaga. At sabi nga na iba, kasi kasama ka ng collective, may consultation, the earlier stripes, hindi lang. Ngayon, post-ed sa nagbago ang sitwasyon. <laughs> the ones who are trying to lead in an old way, dictating from the center, a general political line that is uh, confrontative to overthrow, parang mag-adjust man sila ng method, parang, parang ano, sintunado, at least for many of us. And even for a lot sa masa, ano, a, a, a last example lang, panahon ni ERA, nung nag-EDSA 3, pagkatapos ng EDSA 3, humingi ng consultation yung community uh, CEO Multiversity. Kasi sabi niya, Ed, may problema kami. Sa alam nila, no? nandun ako sa ERA cabinet, hindi naman ako nag-resign. No? Sabi niya, alam mo Ed, kaming CEO, lahat kami nandun sa EDSA 2. At nag-mobilize kami nung organized organized masa pero ang mas maraming masa sa komunidad nasa EDSA 3 gayon paano yan eh sabi ko ngayon ang dilemma natin na ang concept natin ng empowerment no? ay gusto nating ang tao ay organize magiging self reliant and we can apply both tools of psikolohiya ng Pilipino CEO ganyan ganyan kaso sa marami sa masa ang concept nila ng empowerment o sitwasyong ang tagal-tagal nilang dependent or yung old notion ng dato na nananakop, ganyan, ang concept na ng empowerment, itong isang presidenteng, at least ang dating sa atin ay yun, may malasakit sa atin, era para sa mahirap and all that, he is in power and he will take care of us. Yun. He is in power and he will take care of us. Well, ang concept nating dinevelop sa 
long-term democratization, empowerment tradition is mahalaga ang nasa taas, mahalaga ang nandyan, pero wag mong iasa lahat sa nasa taas, magsimula ka sa anong kaya mo, anong pwedeng pagtulungan, and then scale up mo through alliances and advocacy. So, ang yung sinasabi mong dilemma natin, lalo tayo nag-uusap rito, ano tayo, no? parang we live in two different worlds <laughs> Sige. of, of, of uh, concept and affections and relationships. Pero, ang, I think, ang value nito is nasan yung puhunan natin na hindi natin natatap ng gusto, lalo na in relationship sa other sectors. I think that dito ang value ng ano, si Kuloyang Pilipina and that value system. Kasi ano yan eh, historically cumulative na hindi naman yan nag-develop through some scholars lang. Kino-define na lang yan. No? That is to live experiences. Kaya it might not be for many, they might not be as democratic by our standards, but that is the level of democratic participation they they want and can express in relation to other leaders no yan ang dilemma ko rin sa handling yung mga produkto ng mga kaibigan ko <laughs> sige ganito uh, thanks ed actually ma, uh, paano ba to uh, two things muna no una up front si tim uh, shared a framework through chat uh, so maybe uh, Tim can share quickly why he thought this, uh, why why he brought this into the conversation, itong Kinevin framework. Uh, common ito na ginagamit sa bridging leadership. Um, and Tim, so why why do you feel that uh, this is, well, worth bringing into this conversation? And to, yeah. Tim? Nakamute ka pa. Uh, Ayan, no, sige. Ilang uh, i-download ito, no? Yes. Uh, sige, maybe I'll, I'll try to screen share it, Tim, but maybe you can uh, explain quickly. Ayan. Um, this one came, it, it, this is also a Western framework. Uh, this is a uh, Sinefin or Cunevin, kung tawagin nila. Pero this one uh, separates it into five areas. Ang pinakauna, siyempre, yung nasa gitna, yung disorder. No? Uh, pero uh, across time, it will be, uh, mag, mag, yung disorder na yan can, can land on into one of the four uh, areas dito sa, sa ano na ito. Uh, unahin muna natin dito sa lower right. No? Uh, Dito sa lower right, ito yung mga problems na very straightforward and answer. And the relationship between cause and effect is obvious. No? So, dyan, ang gagamit na gamit dyan ay best practice. No? So, kung meron ka ng dating ginagawa na best practice sa ano, i-apply na lang. Directly apply Dun sa upper right corner, no, yung complicated, no? ito yung mga problems wherein expert knowledge or some form of in the investigation and analysis is needed. No? And it, sometimes it might not be straightforward, but with the proper application of expert knowledge and investigation, no, malalaman at malalaman yung ano yung kailangan gawin. No? So complicated. So dito papasok yung tinatawag na good practice. And ngayon, pupunta na tayo dun sa dalawang areas na hindi... Uh, ganun ka paano ba to sigurado yung tamang sagot no uh, papunta dun sa upper left corner yung box na yan ay yung complex no ito yung mga complex situations or complex challenges because the cause and effect uh, are far away in space and time no so yung cause niya hindi natin may dugtong agad-agad kasi nga may delay between the cause and the effect and dito sa mga complex problems, tulad ng mga complex problems natin sa society, na yung mga poverty, yung mga inequity, inequalities, ganyan, dito papasok yan. And the only way for this to be solved is through emergent practice. No? So walang good practice dito, walang best practice dito, but we have to let go of the old way of doing things. And the solutions actually come from the people who are immersed in the problem. Kaya siya emergent practice. And yung last, yung lower left corner ng framework na ito is yung chaotic. 
uh, yung chaotic, ito yung uh, sobrang laki at sobrang ano ba, variable, sobrang uncertain, sobrang uh, ano pa, all those other terms, no? Na systems level at hindi mo makikita kung wala kang pananaw na systems level, no? Uh, for example, yung nangyayari ngayon sa atin sa COVID is nandito sa chaotic part, no? Although some aspects of COVID-19 mupunta pa rin doon sa complex natin. Kasi marami na tayong baong complex problems even before COVID. Eh. So parang ganun. So I guess ito lang yung gusto kong i-share kanina na baka makatulong lang in terms of uh, uh, differentiating what problems or challenges that can be answered. No? Yung, ob yung best practice saka good practice. And where leadership comes in na very important yung pakikipagkapwa tao yung yung uh, yung empathy yung really getting people to work together is yung nandoon sa complex and then nandoon sa chaotic kasi we have to really let go of old ways of doing things in order for the emergent and the novel practice to come out okay Elmer, thanks team yes Eugene. Sure. yung yung naku- yung mga napulot ko no kay Beth kay Ed at saka kay Tim ngayon. Yan, huwag mo alisin muna yung kanyang oh, okay. slide. Tingnan nyo, ang common dyan, yung sense. Common sense. <laughs> Yan yung pakiramdam. I diba, love it. Diba, I love diba? it. <laughs> sense is common. It's common sense, but not so common. So, yung, at dyan, babalik yung, babalik yung sinasabi, yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, yung pakikiramdam. And um, the good leader is the one who can sense and who can command based on that sense. Kaya yung nilagay ko sa chat nga, yung uh, pakikiramdam ang batayan or bilang batayan ng pamumuno. So what differentiates a good leader in any of these four uh, contexts is the one who can sense the best and translate that into a response. Yun yung, yun yung na, nahuli ko dito uh, sa, sa diskusyon na to. Kaya napakahalaga nga no, nung pakikiramdam. Kahit nasa gera ka, kahit may plano ka, uh, pagdating mo to sa actual battlefield, may mararamdaman ka eh, na iba o natama o mali. Kaya babaguhin mo yung plano mo based dun sa pakiramdam mo. Ganun rin sa krisis. Uh, dahil nga yan, lalong-lalo na kung uh, chaotic, eh, napakahalaga nung sensing. Pero pwede kang mag-act muna and then uh, mag-experimento kasi wala kang ibang choice. Eh, no? You act first, kaya inom kang uh, hydroxychloroquine <laughs> bago yung magbawal. <laughs> Buhay ka pa rin naman. Eh. <laughs> diba? So, yun, yun yung napulot ko dito ng uh, ma- tingin ko mahalaga no? yung halaga ng pakikiramdam. Okay. And it's beyond empathy. It's not it's beyond empathy. Mas malapit pa nga yung sensing eh. Thanks Eugene. Okay. Uh, Ed, uh, you raise your hand. Did you? Yes. Ako? Uh-huh. Yeah. Did you? Aha. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Siya dito. Yeah. Eugene yung pagkasabi mo na lalo na yung uh, kung may crisis, uh, may sense yet, paano mag-respond. Uh, ang nakita ko, ang nag-evoke sa akin yung literature ni, ano eh, ni Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow. Kasi yung sensing, sabi niya, uh, at saka acting on that, uh, ano yan eh, integral yan eh, na, kasi magdi-decision ka na. So, pero sabi niya, Merong iba na kalimitan yan mali kasi marami kang biases. Mm. Pero yung may matagal na practice, cumulative and all that, you trust them because yes. hindi yan on the spur of the moment. Parang cumulative, marami siyang references kung saan saan. And at that point, they come together, ito yan. And it's a time na kailangan mag-think and decide fast. no That's one. Mm. But then there are other situations that you should distrust The, the thinking fast, lalo na kung nag-uwi doon lang yan. O oh, ilang beses na nakakakyan ano, at hindi marawakin. And then, so the other part naman is the process of thinking slow, meaning talaga i-deliver. So ang yeah. point niya, again, 
depende sa sitwasyon, uh, well, ang sinabi niya in general is, ang ating default mode is thinking fast. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we don't deliberate every day on every time. But then sabi niya, uh, and we have very deep biases. No? Na yun ang nakita ko namang valuable uh, na ginagawa kong correlate sa psikolo yung Pilipino. Yung mga sabihin natin, these are default biases of human beings. You know? Na for example, uh, yung pag you're invested na in something, you refuse to question it. Or pag uh, parang usapin ng... Uh, anyway, maraming bagay. And generally, yung thinking slow, matrabaho. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I think yung baka magandang explore natin. Ang ganda yung nakita mong yung sense ay pareho sa apat. Well, at yung dahil crisis, ang usapin ng decisive leadership yan, pero hopefully effective leadership rin at credible at susunod yung iba. Eh yun, manggagaling yun sa pagtingin sa kanya na mm-hmm. kilala na ba siya, uh, nakikipag-usap ba, may record ba siya na, ay, in case of that, dyan na ako kasi mas, ano siya, mas maraming tama kaysa palpak eh. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think ganun, ang, ang Pinoy ganun rin eh, marunong yun eh, kung sino yung hilihid nilang kilala na, kundi uh, kinikilala. Yun ang sabi nga namin noon, nung, nung si Chakala ang nagsabi nyo, alam mo, Ed, ang um, challenge kay ERAP bilang presidente, kilala siya pero hindi siya kinikilala bilang presidente. Kinikilala siya bilang artista o bilang humanita. I think yun rin ang naging problema natin ay, balik na naman ako, crisis eh. In times of crisis, at aling community o scale of community ang kailangan mong somehow mag-exercise ng some form of leadership. And using this framework ni Tim Maganda, yun sa complex at uh, novel but even sa complicated at best practice nandoon pa rin yung sense mm-hmm. uh, kaya magandang intersect yan itong various literature at saka yung ating pakiramdam at pakikipagkapwa so ang application ba nito is kung kunwari si Eugene he attends a zoom call technical working group CSO coordinating this and that if he were to be this Filipino leader in crisis ano Uh, during the meeting, after tactical, uh, analytical discussion, he would ask the group, oh, tanungin ko naman kayo, anong pak- pakikiramdam ninyo doon sa, di ba, yung mga kamiting nyo, sa mga stakeholders nyo, ano yung, uh, anong pakikiramdam o pakiramdam? Anong pakiramdam mo? Anong pakiramdam nyo? Di ba? Anong pakiramdam nyo doon sa meeting? Mabigat ba? Magaan? And then, is, is that how a crisis, Filipino crisis leader would uh, ano ba? activate this sensing uh, as an input into crisis decision making? And then, kung kunwari, as a, a father, if, you want, if we want to heighten the itong pakikiramdam ng mga anak natin, di ba? As they grow up, o oh, anak, o oh, anong pakiramdam mo, di ba? Panood, manood ka ng news mamayang gabi, tapos pag-usapan natin over dinner, anong pakiramdam, an- anong pakikiramdam mo, no? Not, not how you, not what are your emotions, but what are you sensing, di ba? Yun ba yung application nun in developing good Filipino leaders who will perform well and sense well during crisis? May salita pang senior si, si Beth nun eh, yung kapa. Di ba Beth? Yeah, kapa. Right, uh, right, hindi right. lang pakiramdam eh, yung kapa. Right, uh, right. Uh, sa, ako, experience ko sa mga probing. Zoom meetings. May pagka-probing yun probing, eh. Probing, diba? probing. Oo. Kasi pag diretso mong tinanong, hindi mo rin makukuha yung sagot eh. <laughs> Kailangan lang. Ano lateral. pakiramdam mo, hindi mo rin makukuha eh. Kailang mga pa ka, kailang makiramdam ka. In fact, yung pakiramdam ay eh, not exactly uh, question eh. Hindi, hindi siya uh, obvious na question. Pero <laughs> to be practical, sa mga Zoom meeting, pag kami may mga hindi kilala uh, or pag may negotiation na mangyayari, may viber kami. <laughs> uh, parallel. May parallel. Uh, parallel. Uh, do kami nag-exchange, yung importante yung exchanging notes. And then, doon na yung mong kapaan, 
doon ay yung uh, pakikiramdam doon sa iba. Uh, baka hindi lang nila masabi doon sa Zoom eh. Pero right, sa Viber, right. nasasabi nila. No, so kailangan right. may parallel or kang uh, or tool. Or kung doon sa chat na perso- send to personal. Oh, yeah. Private, <laughs> private. Not private everyone. Right, right, right. Private. Right. Right. Eh, pag may diskarte, diskar, may diskarte. Pag may multiple channels ka, then you can validate yung sensing mo doon sa kakampi mo, di ba? Parang yes. pare, di ba? Ito ba yung ito yung nararamdaman ko, di ba? Parang ay Okay, si Prof Beth called, she got dropped out and she can't get back in sa nila. Robot kasi. Hello, yes ma'am. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Ah, okay, right. Oh, sige, we'll just wind up and then ano, I'll tell, tell them also. If you cannot, yeah, we're sort of, uh, unless you can. Uh, hindi ko rin alam kung ano yung remedyo now that, ano, but uh, you might want to click the link again. It might work again. Ah, sige. Ah, sige. Um, I'll try to get that to you. Sige. Okay. Oh, sige. Okay. 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 Sige. Thank you very much. Uh, if not, uh, sige. I'll try to get that to you. Okay. Thank you po. Sige. Basta she got out na low bat daw. Ewan ko, inisip ko, maybe last five minutes, how might we uh, structure the next, uh, you know, the, uh, brown bag discussion so that it builds up more intentionally. Admittedly, it's total stranger si Prof. Beth sa akin until Eugene introduced me to her, no? uh, introduced us, connected us. But she seems you know, uh, like an ally and you know, trying to make something out of the book. Kahit konti lang tayo, uh, this puhunan to eh, no? for the next generation of leadership trainers. Do you have any suggestions on how to build this up more uh, more intentionally maybe 5 minutes uh, you can share your ideas in, in this discussion well ako elmer ang suggestion ko which you do anyway uh, let us uh, ano para be more intentional about the harvesting para we build on ano we build on the conversations without necessarily harvest us completely schematized, <laughs> theorized, or with whole diagrams. Para nakita natin, ano ba, nag-build up ba tayo? Uh, because while I'm poor is yung uh, Pilipi, uh, Filipino, Filipino values, and then recognizing that we are, as a, as a group, we, we, sinabi nga, we live uh, multi, ano eh, multi frameworks, and we are open, hindi naman tayo parang chauvinistic na, ah, basta Pilipino lang. Uh, because this, I'm thinking of personally, Filipino is also evolving. <laughs> di, di ba? Mm-hmm. Ang mahalaga lang, yung relasyon natin who have the privilege in a sense of living in, being able to shuttle and even put together uh, ideas and concepts operate in different world, na yung concern, which is my bias, to what extent applicable na yan, kung hindi ba sa lahat, I would say a certain layer ng ano ng uh, communities no at the barangay level at LGU level kasi kumbinsan ang diskusyon sa leadership is at the larger institutional level no corporations national government academic institutions and all that so kung ma ano mo as the host at pasimuno nito <laughs> mag-share share tayo no? kasi it might also ano parang attract a few more and then we can suggest right. sino pa ang we should uh, consciously invite oi salika oh ito basahin mo na muna ito tapos right ito, right in fact we we can uh, open up a few more streams of conversation para you know mas mabilis yung build up so far yung pace ngayon one per week and then we're uh, ano but if you say we want barangay leaders or youth leaders as another stream parallel but since they're on youtube they can be woven um, uh, quite easily so just let me know no and um, how we can make this productive or useful. Hindi, okay naman sa akin yung once a week muna kasi grabe sa atin yun, sa katutak ng ating mga <laughs> Zoom and other meetings. 
Sige, others, any suggestions on how we might improve the setup or the community or the flow or whatever? Eugene, Tim, Vince? Oh, I think uh, ako, marami akong tututunan. Uh, oh, ako rin. <laughs> Dami kong na-pick up as we move along. And I think uh, dahil nga yung iba nga, well, kahapon eh, may, may famous statement na uh, fortunate itong ating crisis. <laughs> you know who said that. <laughs> uh, uh, but the reality is, yun na nga, uh, ano eh, talagang yung shocks bring... Uh, "Quote unquote opportunities for change, uh, and if we don't, uh, if you don't, uh, if we don't act and sense and respond <laughs> under itong novel practice uh, situation, eh, wala. Di tayo abante <laughs> or, or malulunod lang tayo dun sa sa chaos. <laughs> so okay. yon. Tuli lang natin. Okay, sige. Thanks. Admittedly, uh, this program was an experiment. Also, it's a probe or an act. To help sense what's going on and what resonates. So, para sa akin kahit na anim lang tayo dito, parang effective naman at least for the six of us. Yes, ma'am, uh, Beth, and then Vince, and then Tim. Hindi, ano lang, baka may ibang speakers. Okay, yeah. Uh, baka umay na rin ako, ha? Oh, sige, yes. well, yeah, we can, uh, baka, ano? Baka may ibang, ano, si, si, si Ed, you know, and yeah, sige. or somebody else from out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, kasi hindi naman tayo maubusan rin ng ano. So, yes, yeah, so we can alternate uh, so that we have multiple perspectives. And yes. then, yun nga, since we share this on YouTube anyway, so pwede rin natin mahabi along the way. And then, baka mag-emerge. No? Mag-emerge rin yung understanding by listening to multiple uh, yeah, uh, resource or panelists. Okay, yeah, we can do that. But just to say congratulations for this, uh, for thinking of this series, because it's it's so helpful. Kahit na malit lang tayo ang feeling ko ano, uh, napakalaki ng ginagawa nating ano this uh, contribution dun sa discourse hindi lang dun sa ano dun sa whole wrapping up things and understanding the situation. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ren. Thank you, Ren. Uh, sa inyo, Prof. Beth. I'm glad Eugene. Introduce us, connected us. So you have Vince and Tim. Um, hindi, pakiramdam ko, marami rin akong natututunan. Tingin ko, tuloy-tuloy lang natin. Uh, even with Prof. Bet, tingin ko, marami na siyang nakahanay. Eh. Nasa tingin ko, mas madaling uh, tunawin o i-digest sa atin din psikolohiya sa ating pagka-Pilipino. So, tingin ko magiging maayos yung dalay ng pagkatuto at ng diskurso din ang pag-uusap. Pero, welcome din yung mga ibang speakers kung meron man. Maraming salamat po. Thanks. Tim? Uh, wala pa ako naisip sa ngayon. Maybe we can sleep on it. <laughs> And then, baka later on, we might find something paano natin structure better. Ah, sige. Okay. Sige, so uh, next week ule, Wednesday, same time, may nakaschedule tayo whether we have Prof. Beth again the next part na nakasalang or we choose to insert maybe Ed uh, to share his perspective or experiences. Uh, we'll update you on that. Okay. But let us know in advance. Ha? Alam mo naman ngayon, grabe ang salang ng mga <laughs> katulad natin. <laughs> Right. Oh. But so Wednesday, same time, same time Wednesday next week. And then uh, tanawin ko si Ed. Oh, Ed, uh, does that work for you? Uh, maybe you can share your experiences next week. No? Uh, you, your understanding of Filipino psychology and then field uh, notes from the pra as a practitioner trainer. Does that work for you, Ed? Nawala na si Ed. Nandyan, nandyan. Nandyan pa siya. Okay lang. Uh... Sige, at least within a week, baka sabi ko nga kay Elmer Beth ang aking uh, ginagawa ngayon eh, I try to contact yung ilang mga leader graduates sa na sa probinsya. Uh, pero hindi ko pa na co-collate. Para at least maliba sa sarili kong interpretasyon at uh, alaala 
matanong rin sila o ano nga ba talaga ang inyong ginagawa kasi ang self identify sila leader leader grad community leader graduate sila so pwedeng tanong oh, anong natutunan niyo panahon noon at explicit yung anong ginagamit yung mga konsepto including itong idea ng ano and uh, maganda sa konteksto nga ng ito nga sa covid may, uh, tama pa rin yung framing na ano eh sabi nga tama si Beth na leadership naman crisis wala crisis there is something common to all those but crisis does introduce a uh, element ng yung sinabi ni Eugene baka they look up the leader ay mag-initiate ka pwedeng tumaya ka muna sa consultation mo kami kaysa <laughs> pero kung minsan may wag, wag muna wala namang may alam sa atin eh di convene muna lang kami pero bottom line lagi sa sabihin eh sino mauuna yun ang whole point <laughs> lagi eh maraming ano eh maraming willing sumunod pero ayaw na sila unang tataya so may elementary ng a calculated risk taking eh, or sense of responsibility ang isang leader <laughs> including pwede mong i-self limit ah eh, nandito na lang ako sa aking maliit na network ng mga kindred spirits or do we go public si Joey Salceda lagi ako kinaka-join eh dahalata ako sa Facebook mo hindi ka na lang didiscuss ano mang national issues puro ka na lang sa mga local parang clusters of energy in the local areas. <laughs> Ba't hindi ka nagsasalita sa national? May asin ka pa naman. <laughs> Ay, ang whole point ko nga yun, ang point ni Betty, yung discourse sa national, hindi mo malaman kung anong lingwahe dyan at saka, at saka ano bang impact niya, lalo na sa ngayon. No? So ako, mahalagang pag-usapan natin, ano yung parang circles or communities na nandun tayo nag-operate because I think Barid na rin ang ating mga communities that might, if we bring that to the conversation, lalo may enrich pa, no? In addition to the literature and insight. So I'll try, starting muna dun sa particular okay. network ng mga uh, na-train namin nun at saka yung mga tumulong sa pag-training ng uh, grassroots community leaders, lalo na if I can succeed and I think I can within a week at least to get a few more of them na mas may deeper interview ako sa kanila. Sige. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo. Kita-kita okay, ulit next you. week. Okay, salamat. It's been a good day. Uh, Elmer, one last request. Pwede expand din ang attendance. Baka yes, yes. tayo makuha. Ah, sige, sige. Ah, gagawin natin yan. We'll announce uh, more aggressively. Okay. okay. Maraming salamat. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye, you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.